when you don't um give the necessary attention to your partner you put them in that vulnerable state to actually cheat <laughs> Hey guys welcome back to my channel this is a seat out with kimberly if it's your first time here you're welcome and if you're a returning subscriber thank you for always tuning in thank you for always watching our videos and thank you for subscribing if you have not subscribed please do the needful click on the notification bell and watch our old videos and um, the new videos I will be updating this channel with. So today I'll be talking about cheating. And I'll be talking about cheating in every kind of relationship. Be it a godly relationship. You know, you're in a relationship with uh, a guy or a lady. Both of you are Christians and it's a godly relationship. Or um, both of you are not Christians. You're in a relationship, whatever. Um, but I'm going to put a caveat here and I'm going to put a disclaimer that I am not in support of cheating. I hate cheating. Cheating is not a good thing. It should not be allowed. It is not a good thing. I want us to look at the flip side of something. Cheating is a bad thing. It's a terrible thing and shouldn't be heard of when two people are in love. They say they are in love or they claim to be in love and then um, one of them is going to you know give attention to someone else you know date someone else or you know or sleeping with someone else or in fact um people say that if you truly love somebody you won't cheat them i agree to an extent yes but also you can love someone so much and still cheat on them because of the circumstances surrounding you and i'm not in any way invalidating the effects of cheating neither am i saying that cheating should be allowed or it's a good thing no what i'm trying to say is that when there are certain you know when these incidences of cheating happens everybody lashes out on the person that cheats everybody you know screams out at them oh you are a bad person you're a demon and all of that all of that but sometimes we don't also when you don't um, give sometimes the necessary attention to your partner, you put them in that vulnerable state to actually cheat. It happens to both genders. When you don't give proper attention, maybe your partner is trying to tell you something as a lady and then a lady is trying to tell her partner something and then the man never gives her attention or she keeps complaining of one thing babe i need you to adjust this i need you to work on this i need you to do this and then he's never doing it and then a guy comes that seems to you know hear her a guy comes that seems to see her now i i said it from the beginning that cheating is not just sleeping with someone there is emotional cheating as well where you begin to pay more attention to someone who is not your partner so i'm not even talking about the extreme of sleeping with someone no right it can get to a point where you begin to entertain other people or someone else more than your partner you begin to instead of talking to your partner about things that bother you you begin to talk to someone else about it your attention begins to go more toward to that person or that other person and when something happens to you this is the person you want to talk to there is already emotional cheating coming up and anything that comes up with you you chat them up they are the ones that know about your day the details of your day and everything now if a man or a woman let's let's talk about the aspect of a man first if a man does not engage his woman's attention there is a high probability of that woman cheating on you to be honest it takes a demonic woman to actually really 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 be intentional to cheat on her husband or her man because the way women are if they find a man that truly pays attention to them that truly loves them um I, I I can really doubt that they will actually cheat on that man. 
your woman is trying to tell you you're have you're doing these things i'm not liking it you're not um paying enough attention to me you're not communicating enough you're not doing this enough she's telling you over and over again you're not doing anything about it you don't even bother yourself about the details of her life about the things she's working on her plans her visions these things don't bother you you just come and then you ask her how was your night did you sleep well have you eaten guys we are not ladies are not at that point where we want to be hearing these kind of questions maybe a girl of 20 maybe but a girl is not interested in yes they are important right to ask these questions oh have you eaten yeah it shows care but this should not be what the conversation should be most of the time there are core things to this woman's life there are visions, there are things in her hands that she needs to do and she needs to see that you understand the extent of what she's doing. That you can, that if both of you choose to journey together, that her visions will not die with you in her life. So all you care about is, have you eaten? Okay, I'm going to send you money. This is that. That's not what life is just all about. Yes, it's good to balance it. It's good to give your woman money and all of that. It's good to balance these things. And let's even talk about the aspect of multitasking. Adulthood is a place where you can combine a whole lot of things together. You can't say because your work is progressing, you will allow your relationship to suffer. And the thing is, do you even pay attention to your relationship to know that, okay, my relationship is suffering? That's one aspect that men are really slacking. It takes a woman to be sensitive to say, mm, this thing, if I allow it to persist, is going to destroy this relationship. But it's very hard and rare to see men that actually pay attention and say, mm, this thing, if nothing is done about it, it will destroy this relationship. And is the relationship even that important to you that you will say, okay, babe, I'm noticing this. Let's work on this. Let's check this. Or you just be quiet until things begin to fall apart. As a man, do you do you do like an inward examination? Oh, what am I doing that is able to put my relationship in jeopardy? Do you do that? Honestly, when a woman complains of something over and over again and nothing is done about it, she moves on in her head. And if there is somebody around her who is ready to listen to her, she gives them the attention. Let's talk about Eve. Eve gave the serpent attention. People use the analogy of the fact that, yes, if Adam was present, I, I can say that, yes, maybe Adam was in the field, he was working, but he could have carried Eve with her. Eve would have assisted in some things, right? Engage your partner. Carry them along with life. Get involved with their lives. These things, it brings, it, it causes people to start cheating, even unknown to them. And by the time they discover that they're actually cheating, they've gone too deep that they can't come out. It now takes the grace of God to pull people out. But all what we humans see is when they make the terrible mistake and then everybody points fingers at them and they're like, oh, you've cheated on your partner, you're a bad person, you're this. But every, nobody enters a relationship with the mind of wanting to cheat on their partners. Nobody. And then let's talk about the other gender, which is the female side. If you're always nagging at your man, <laughs> men want peace and respect. If you're always nagging at your man, every little thing you nag, a woman that gives him peace of mind, he will start talking to that lady. He will start conversing with her. Because he feels that when he comes to discuss anything with you, the next thing, you people will start quarreling. Men want peace. And as a result of that quarrel, you know, there is that destabilization and all of that. And ha that happens. And then he wants, he just wants peace. So he moves on to the lady who, who, you know, will give him peace of mind. And ladies, to be honest, rather, ask for wisdom from God on how best to communicate your points to your partner. To be honest, oh God, I used to have a very funny way of communicating my points. And I'm still learning to communicate better. I would want to force down my point down your truth. 
But maturing has taught me that you learn that everybody has their perspective. And there are some things that you need to pray for your partner that the Lord should touch their heart to see your point. Not force it down their truth. So when you begin to do this, or you begin to give your partner certain spaces, this silence treatment, instead of, you know, coming to sit down with him to talk about certain things, you create that space between you and your partner, and then you give him room to get close to other ladies. And another thing I'll say is, don't break up with your man over things that can be resolved by, between the two of you. Don't break up with him thinking, oh, he will value you more. Ah, they want yourself. That guy will move on. There are ladies hawking around men like water. He will move on. He will start getting close to other ladies. And by the time you return back, you discovered ah, this man has gone. So men want respect. Men want to be talked in a certain way. They want to be, want to be regarded. And men, please, if you've been with I'm still going to talk about this in another video. But if you've been with a lady for more than two years, do the need for. If you're not ready to get married to a lady, do not date her. Please. Don't, don't waste their time. A man can get a woman pregnant at any age. A woman, she's thinking of menopause from 45. And how many years do we have to live on earth? Please, if you are in a relationship with someone, take their life seriously. Don't be selfish and self-centered and just self-seeking. Stop thinking of only yourself. The energy you give to your partner determines if they will start looking for, for validation from other people outside. When you don't give your partners, your wives enough attention, they begin to seek validation outside. And that can in turn be detrimental to your relationship, except you don't value the relationship. Because there are men seeking after your woman like there is no tomorrow. And there are women seeking after your men like there is no tomorrow. So value what you have. You won't have it forever. Someone else will come and take it from you and nurture it and groom it to grow. This person is given. Now, still talking about creating boundaries and self-respect and all of that. The next thing is to guard your heart with all diligence. Because out of it proceeds the issues of life. Very important. Your mind is very important. Your heart is very important. Protect it. Shield yourself. It is not everybody you entertain. And it's not every good thing that is for you. To be honest, there are some things you need to shut the door to. So, learn to say no when you have to say no. Learn to keep people that are not meant to, you know you've prayed, this person is not meant for me. Learn to decipher what their relationship should be in your life and place them in that place. If they are meant to be friends, keep them as friends. If they are meant to be acquaintances, maintain that. I, that's one aspect of my life I don't play with. I will make it very clear to you that you are not my friend, you are an acquaintance. So that you don't start assuming things. Do you understand? So, this is very crucial. Protect your heart. Protect your emotions. And guys, please help your partners out. Help them. And when you start noticing that you're developing feelings for somebody, if you have a mature partner, please communicate with them. Remember I said mature. If you have an immature partner, then confide in maybe a spiritual head. If you have somebody you are accountable to talk to the person, I'm in a relationship and I'm, I'm having these feelings towards this person or this person is coming into my space and all of that communicates with someone. But if you have a mature partner who can walk you through certain um, attractions, talk to your partner, babe, I notice I'm really liking this person. I think I need to give him more attention. I love those kind of relationships. And I'm happy to, I'm very proud to say I have one or such. Where I can easily say, ah, babe, I think I'm liking this person. No. Ah, please, when I'm talking to this person, they encourage me not to, you know, and all of that. Let them walk you through such moments. Have boundaries. 
have boundaries as a person have boundaries so that even if your partner i learned some, the way i was brought up is if i have a dream in my home you're encouraged to share your dreams during morning devotion or as soon as you wake up you share it with daddy or mommy somebody will be there to pray with you and all of that and i met someone in 2020 i reconnected rather with someone in 2020 and then i, I would have dreams i really liked this person and i really respected this person as well so if i have dreams i'll just run to him i'll call him immediately i want to share my dreams with him and i'm sure he saw it as immaturity but one day he said no this is not cool right when you just wake up from dreams don't don't just share them take some time to pray about them before you come to talk in fact there are some dreams you don't have to share and i said oh really and then I explained to him that growing up, we were encouraged to share dreams when we wake up from our sleep, right? But there are some of these things that when, as you keep growing, you learn setting boundaries. What am I saying in essence? Put boundaries to your emotions, guys. We've talked about, yes, the reason why your partner might cheat. Lack of attention, lack of communication, you know, you're not hearing them out. You're not seeing your partner. You're not putting yourself in their shoes. You're not even, um, you're not compassionate towards your partners. So when somebody else who has these other qualities come around them, they give them the attention. And trust me, there will be somebody who is always better than you. Whether you like it or yes. But now the solution to this on our own part is boundary, self-boundary. I, I I remember one time I went to minister somewhere in Cyprus and um with me to this ministration. The the person who they sent to come and pick me up for the ministration, after the ministration, this person reached out to me and said, I'd like to take you out. I really like you. And and I told him, I said, I'm sorry, I don't want to go. And my boyfriend said, Oh, that's that's um I should have told him I'm in a relationship. And I told him, I said, Let me tell you something. Whether I'm with you or not. I will not entertain this person. Why? Because I have personal boundaries. Do you understand me? So have your personal boundaries that even without your partner being in the picture, that you're able to respect yourself first. Self-respect. You, you can't always just do things because of your partner. Yes, that is also there. We will come to that. That's the second thing to be done. But there should be that place of self-respect respect yourself respect yourself that when certain advances are made at you you are able to cut it no i'm not entertaining this i'm not interested in this right and then the second aspect is now because of the respect you have for your partner yes there might be um, there might not be everything you pray for and hope for, right? But if you have chosen to be with this person, if you are sure and you are certain that this is the person God has chosen for me, then you now have to start praying about their excesses to God. Like there is a way that God speaks to people. I remember a, a friend of mine um, was about to tell me something and he kept praying about this thing. He was praying about it before he got to my house that the Lord should actually speak or maybe speak to me or make it easy for him. I can't really remember. And on my way coming back from work that day, God had already spoken to me about this thing. And then when I came home and he came to visit me, I was telling him in excitement. I was like, oh my God, you won't believe what God was telling me today. And he was like, my God, do you know I was praying to God to actually communicate this thing to you in a healthy way? Like, I, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. And I was not hurt because God had already spoken to me about it. In fact, I was excited. There is a way you can pray for the emotions of your partner. That God can straighten out certain things in them. Develop long suffering. Love is patient and love is kind. Develop long suffering. I know that some of you will say that do you know how many years I've been with this guy or this lady and she's still misbehaving. Now, you now have to look at it. Is this person the right person for you? Because let's not mix it up. There is a tiny line between tolerating someone and taking nonsense. Red flags. Tolerating red flags. No. 
there is a tiny line in between. We'll have a video on this as well. What should you tolerate and what should you not tolerate? There are red flags in relationships that you should run away from. Guard your heart, guys. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it proceeds the issues of life. Emotions are very powerful. <laughs> when you start entertaining certain people, it just takes a matter of time, right? You are talking to them and like, ah, ah, this person is amazing, you no. Know? This person is wonderful. My partner is not even doing this thing this person is doing. Your mind begins to make comparisons between your partner and this other person. And gradually, you begin to consider them that, ah, ah, what if I'm with this other person? What if this is the person I'm even with? You know, I'll be doing way better, right? Because my partner is not giving me this thing. Your take home from this video is develop self-control. I had a bit of fever at work and I had to get um IV um parastamol so that's that i'm not sick guys i'm not really sick <laughs> that's why i have this on just i might still take some injections today that's all i'm not sick i'm fine so um your take home from this video is boundaries personal boundaries um self-control respect for your partner um what else did we mention I talked about the fact that also put yourself in the shoes of your partner. Give your partner attention, please. If a woman is complaining to you, babe, I don't like this thing. Listen to her, guys. If you love that woman, if you don't want to lose her, listen to her. Babe, I don't like this thing. Listen, women can think up a storm by you not responding to them. They would think you are giving another woman attention if you are not listening to them. So, pay attention to your woman. Women, respect your man. Give him peace of mind. It's not everything you must comment on. There are certain things that just be patient at the right time. You will have your time to talk. Okay? You will have your time to make your comments. It's not every time you just are in a rush to talk. No. Overlook some things. A time will come for your response. And there was something God told me. He said, pray for the heart of your man. Pray for his heart too. I learned something recently. Pray for the influences around your husband though. Pray for the associations around him. That they are the right associations. And pray that your husband is firm in God or your man. That he's firm in God. That he's able to tolerate. Um, even if he's, in the, he's the only Christian amongst worldly people. That God is able to keep him to stand though. <laughs> Guys as well thank you so much for watching this video um stay tuned for uh subsequent videos my name is kimberly benson and this is a sit out with kimberly do well to subscribe to this video if you enjoyed it thank you for watching till the end bless you bless you love you guys